Number 18. Most automobiles have a coolant reservoir to catch radiator fluid that may overflow when the engine is hot. A radiator is made of copper and is filled to its 16 liter capacity when at 10 degrees Celsius. What volume of radiator fluid will overflow when the radiator and fluid reach their 95 degrees Celsius operating temperature, given that the fluid's volume coefficient of expansion is 400 times 10 to the minus 6 per Celsius? All right. So here's a picture. All right. We have uh, the coolant filled within this, you know, uh, uh, radiator system. Okay. The radiator system here, which is outlined in black, is made out of copper. And we know that both when the temperature changes now, right, initially this system is filled when the, both the copper and the radiator fluid is basically at 10 degrees Celsius, all right? And we know that when uh, the temperatures now change, both the fluid in this container and the copper itself will change in volume. Now, we have to make certain simplifying assumptions to make this problem, you know, calculable. So... What I'm going to do here is let's assume now, you know, the, the part in black here, let me change the color. The part in black here is the copper. And this copper here has a certain volume to it, right? It has a certain length. It had, or let me, let me detail this piece. It has a certain width, right? Or a certain length. It has a certain width and a certain height. Okay. Now, uh, when we talk about volume expansion, of a certain object, we're talking about that object's volume expansion, right? So although this container has a volume that's comprised of copper, right? The whole volume is not that of copper. It's just the exterior portion, all right? Now, so this formula applies to the solid copper only, if I'm talking about copper. But it so happens that the approximation here will be close enough that if I assume that this copper has mostly length, okay, or let's just say all length, and basically no width and no height to it, which is probably reasonable, right? I mean, the copper, I'm sure, is very thin. So it, being that that's the case, the main change that will be occurring is along its length axis. And therefore, this formula over here will provide a good approximation for how this object's volume will change when the temperature of this copper changes, okay? Um, so now, what knowing that, what I realize is that, as I was stating before, that both volumes will change over time, right? So we know that there's an initial volume uh, for copper, and we know that that will uh, equal, or the volume of this container, right, which is gonna be approximated by the volume that the copper is housing, will equal the uh, initial volume of the uh, coolant. I'll put a little C-O-O-L, okay? We know that because at initially it's at 10 degrees, right? 10 degrees uh, Celsius. But in the final case, we know that both of these materials will expand differently, all right? Because they're different. So they'll probably have different uh, beta values. So that means that the, or the final value of the copper the final volume of the copper will not be equal to the final volume of this coolant, all right? And we know that here's the beta of copper and here is the beta of the fluid. And since the beta of the fluid is greater than that of the copper, we know then that the, oops, that the volume, the final volume of the copper should be less than, right? The final volume of the coolant. In other words, the volume that this copper creates, right, the housing, the box that the copper creates, it will increase in volume. However, the fluid that's in this container will increase at a greater amount of volume, right? And therefore, there will be some overflow. So imagine, imagine this copper box increases by a volume of one unit. At the same time, the fluid also increases by a volume of one unit. Well, then no overflow will happen, right? If they're both equal and they both change equally, then, you know, as the box gets bigger, the flu is also expanding in volume and they're equal, so there's no overflow. But as soon as the box is expanding more slowly than the fluid is expanding, we know we're going to get overflow eventually, right? So that's essentially what's happening in this problem. So how would you think about calculating that overflow? Well, 
we would basically say that, we, I mean, we could do it this way, that the final volume of the coolant minus the final volume of the copper box would be our answer, okay? That's fine, you can do it that way. Another way to look at it is that the changes in each volume will also have this relationship to it, meaning that the change in volume of the copper will be less than the change in volume of the coolant. And I can do my calculations by using the change values. It's gonna be essentially equivalent, why? Because the initial volumes are the same. You can do your substitutions. Remember, the change in volume is, is simply going to be equal to final minus initial, right? So I mean, if you right, if I, if I expand on this, I then get final volume of uh, copper minus the initial volume of copper will be less than the final uh, volume of the coolant minus the initial volume of the coolant. And we know again that we said that the initial values will be equal. So mathematically, these would just cancel, right? Because they're on opposite sides of the sign. And right, I could just I could just add this term on over. They, since they're both equal, they cancel. Hopefully that's good. And if you realize what are we left with when we simplify this, we are left with this. Okay, so that's why it works. Um, so basically all I need to do now, as I was stating before, is that the amount, amount of overflow will be equal to, Okay, we, we, we know that it's going to be the larger volume, right, minus the smaller volume. In other words, it'll be the change in volume of the coolant minus the change in volume of that copper box. Okay, and remember the assumptions I'm making here for the copper, uh, you know, is that it's basically all length, right? This, this copper here has all length, it has minimal width and height. All right, if that weren't the case, then the calculation would become a little harder, uh, but I don't have any basis to, first of all, they only gave me the volume of the box, right, basically, or it could have been a cylinder. It doesn't really matter what the shape is, but they only told me the volume initially, so I have to make that assumption. Now, um, so the change in volume of the coolant, right, is going to be equal to then the beta, the beta value of the coolant multiplied by the initial volume of the coolant uh, minus then the change in temperature of the coolant. That will then be, I don't know, why did I put a minus sign in there? I have no, I have no idea, guys. That's multiplied. <laughs> then minus now the beta of the copper times in the initial volume of the copper times in the change in temperature of the copper. And remember, we know that the initial volumes are the same as we discussed, and the change in temperatures will also be the same because they're under the same sets of conditions. So therefore, this simplifies now to become uh, the initial volume multiplied by the change in temperature will be multiplied then the beta of the coolant minus then the beta value of the copper. And here it is, right? This is now the formula, amount of overflow. All right, so here you go. All you got to do is now plug in the values. So there's going to be the initial volume. And you can leave this, by the way, in terms of uh, liters. That's fine. I'm just going to leave it in terms of liters. Okay, so now um, the initial volume here was 16 liters. The change in temperature was 95 minus 10. And then the betas now are going to be the coolant value, which they told us in the problem was 400 times 10 to the minus six. Then minus then the beta of copper, which I wrote down over here, 51 times 10 to the minus six. And then when you calculate this, you'll get the amount of overflow. So 16 times then parenthesis 95 minus 10 times then 400 times 10 to the minus 6 minus 51 times 10 to the minus 6. And we get a value here of about, um, I'll put the answer in the upper left. So the amount of overflow will be equal to, in terms of uh, liters, the amount of overflow is going to be 0 0.475, I guess, with, with uh, three sig figs. So four seven, five uh, liters. That's the amount of overflow. All right. Now you, you, I don't know if, you know, another assumption that could have been made is that the copper doesn't change. That would have made the problem even easier. If the copper doesn't change in length at all, then in terms of the equation down here on the bottom, you know, this would have been X nade, so to speak. And it's just then the change in whatever the change in volume of the coolant is will then be the uh, amount that would have overflowed. So it kind of depends on what assumptions you make here but I think we should be taking into account the change in volume of that copper object that's formed. And uh, 
Yeah. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe, help us out, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.